on Valorant. <laughs> that shit's dangerous. Honestly, let's start a let's start an agenda here. Let's. I, I'm down to like totally talk shit about Dashy and Optic. Like I'm grinding rank yesterday with Pred, Shotzi, and uh, Kenny. Meanwhile, this guy Dashy's playing Valorant. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know about that Optic team. Yo, Red Hood, I see you in the chat now, brother. Once again, thanks for those five gifted, brother. Danny Ball, thanks for the prime, man. Taz Monster, once again, thanks for the sub. What shoes are we rocking? I've got some Asics on right now. I've got some Asics on right now. Chopsticks, thanks for the gifted sub, brother. My dog. I can't believe we played each other and ranked the other day. You, you killed me a couple times. Though, actually, you know what, Chopsticks? Now the only thing that I want to bring up, dude... If I recall correctly, and I could be faded here, but you need to tell me the truth, Chopsticks. When we played against each other, I'm like 99% sure you had an Optic skin on. Is that, is that true? I need confirmation. I, I can't remember if my... If my it, it, am I misremembering that? I think we... Last year's. Okay, okay. Hey, listen, man. Look, sometimes that green looks good, man. I'm not holding it against you. I don't look at you any different. I'm just saying I had a Jimmy Neutron brain blast and just kind of remembered what, what the fuck that I was. I'm glad that I wasn't. I'm not faded. Maybe my memory does work. It's so weird, bro. I can remember like very oddly specific things in games. I wish I could remember that about like real life and important information and like facts and stuff. But no, I just remember like exchanges in call of duty modern warfare 3 that's crazy yo paradox gaming thank you so much for the tier one fortune cookie brother always good to see you re in the resub man play val with dashy gentlemen as much as i would love to play val with dashy i think i'm on cod today i think i'm on cod today this cod thing has just been too good to me yesterday we were having some good luck with the uh, 120 fov with the sub in our hand that was a lot of fun Man, as, as, as much as I would like to play on a, 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 sh a smaller FOV or a... What is... Oh, my God. It's not shorter, smaller FOV. Uh, a lower FOV. Jesus Christ. See? That's what I'm talking about. I can remember what skin this guy was wearing, but I can't remember how to speak properly. A lower FOV... The lower FOV is just, like, too slow for me, man. I just don't enjoy it. I know that if I committed to it, it would probably be better for me. And I know we have this conversation every day. And my opinion changes every day. So, for today, I'm just letting you guys know this 120 FOV is going to be singing the whole time. You need that WSP9 build? I got you, brother. Hit the exclamation point loadouts, my brother. Good morning, handsome. What up, Drew? Good to see you, man. Good morning, T-Disc. How you doing, baby? Brother, yo, I, I have not been playing... I have not been paying close enough attention to N, uh, NCAA basketball, college basketball. Bro, those motherfuckers at UConn are unreal. You know, I used to watch a lot of college basketball when I was a kid, brother. I was locked in with the Fighting Illini. My brother was a huge Duke fan. And I watched a lot of college basketball. I really did. And... Let me say this, brother. Those guys on UConn, there just wasn't a single player on that team that didn't know how to handle themselves in a clutch situation. Those guys were way too comfortable, man. Those guys were way too... They were well coached. I mean, they, they all looked like they were NBA ready. I couldn't believe it, man. Those guys looked like they were the final boss for any... That damn near might have been one of the best-looking college basketball teams I've ever seen in any era. I'm sad that I didn't watch it last year. I mean, those guys were automatic, brother. Even, the, you know, sometimes, like, crunch time, national championship, you don't end up in the national championship if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. But the full-court press, those guys just looked way too comfortable getting out of it. I mean, there wasn't any panic. There wasn't any doubt that those guys they had that game handled it's impressive that was impressive jack stan wiley thank you so much for the prime brother sinister kid thanks for the tier one much love brother appreciate the hustle out of you thank you sinister
Dan Hurley looks like a Johnson. I mean, he's got some passion, that's for sure. He's got some passion. Are you looking forward to watching the Masters? I am, brother. I really am. I didn't see WrestleMania, no, but I saw somebody tweet like, dude, I haven't watched the WWF or the WWE in over a decade. It's like he was mad that he hasn't been watching it or paying attention. I guess WrestleMania was crazy. Was WrestleMania not on pay-per-view? Everybody, everybody was seemed like they were able to watch it, like just out in the open. Was it on like a network or a streaming service that everybody? It was on Peacock. Okay, gotcha. I got a Peacock subscription. Maybe I should have watched it. I wonder what the economics look like now if you're not forcing people to pay for pay per view. P check or Peacock must be writing a pretty big check to the WWE. They have like a licensing deal or broadcast deal. They must. I saw a clip of it and brought me back 15 years. I know, McGowan. Yeah, for me, I mean, that's why, I mean, hindsight now, for me, that was, uh, that's how 100 Thieves ended up black, red, and white because the NWO, true story to this day, still should have done orange and blue, man. Should have made it orange and navy blue. Oh, well. Vengeance, thanks for the prime, brother. Appreciate you, baby. Always, man. Thank you. It's moving to Netflix in January. That's going to be pretty big for them. Netflix is crazy. I'm trying to figure out the gentleman on Netflix, bro. I love Guy Ritchie. Obviously saw the movie with Matthew McConaughey. When I first started the initial two episodes, I'm like, is this basically like the gentleman, the movie script, but different? And now I know clearly that it is very different, but very similar in a lot of ways. I'm enjoying it. I like it. The main actor I wasn't sure about because he kind of played like this dickhead in uh, what's that HBO show or not HBO? Something to do with hotels. He was in the second season. You guys know what I'm talking White Lotus. Exactly. The White Lotus. Well, I didn't like the White Lotus and I didn't want this guy to be the main character, the gentleman, because there's an episode of the White Lotus where this guy is like basically cheating on his wife with somebody else's wife. And he takes off his underpants and his cock is just hanging out. And it's massive. It's huge. Bro, his dick was so big. I literally had to Google. I'm like, there's no way that this guy's meat is this big. And he said that it was fake. He said it was fake. And it made me feel much better about myself. I was like, thank the Lord, brother. Because that was a quick way to make me feel very inadequate. More inadequate than I already feel. Yo, uh, Healy Williamson, thank you so much for the tier one, man. Big up, Nate Shot. You know the rules. But now, now that that's behind me, no, can't believe you're bringing up Drake this early. Yo, listen, I'm just keeping it a buck with you guys. It's the first thing I saw. I'm like, no way my girl's been asking to watch The Gentleman. Because if she's been asking to watch The Gentleman, she claims it was because it was like the number one show on Netflix. But me being the paranoid motherfucker that I am, I'm like, wait. Is she only want to watch this because she remembers that guy and his meat from the White Lotus? Like, why does she have so much interest in this show? I don't think she had any idea, if I'm being honest with you. But I did. Bit jealous of the cock and the gentleman? Yeah, I, for sure. But, yo, he's actually great. I, I'm enjoying him in the show. He's doing great. Dashie's on Valorant right now. I know, I know. The block is hot. Everybody, uh, Everybody's talking about it. I saw him. What show are we talking about? We're talking about The Gentleman on Netflix, brother. I got to start looking at my monitor over here so I can look at you guys in the camera. I'm always looking over here. Do you play with the mouse pad? I mean, I play with the mouse pad when I'm on keyboard mouse, but I'm on controller. Do you still play with Ninja? I, I, we just don't play any of the same games. Not that we don't want to play with each other. We just don't play any of the same games. Uh, hold on, gentlemen. Let me change the filter on this thing. Um, uh, what else do I need on here? Okay, there we go. Yo, Ice Cream, thank you very much for the uh, Prime sub, brother. Is Invasion gone yet? Not yet, unfortunately. Did you figure out the top monitor? McGowan, for whatever reason, the top monitor is on now. I didn't do anything different. Something must have happened yesterday when I turned on my computers. Maybe it just didn't... I don't know. 
Your monitor is glossy. Is it IPS? No, it's actually OLED. Both, all, every monitor you see on the screen right now is OLED. It might just look glossy because I have a light coming down or maybe, I don't know. Yo, Iridescent, thank you so much for the prime. Trap dogs, appreciate you, brother. Open wide mouth for me. Open your mouth wide for me. Jesus, Bergnuts. Yo, Bergnuts, you got a sub, bro. You cannot be saying that kind of crazy shit and not be a sub. Like, brother, you're one of ours. But we cannot be talking about my wide open mouth uh, without a sub badge next to your name, man. Just straight up. But yeah, yo, gentlemen, all right, listen, I want to talk about this, and I need you guys to stick with me here, okay? Yo, Drew Val, listen, I actually don't like when people gift the subs to the people that are saying the wild shit that need to be subbed, but we appreciate you, Drew Val. It always happens. I always have to say, yo, nobody can gift that guy a sub. He has to do it himself. Why am I so obsessed with subs? No, listen, bro, what do you mean? This guy's telling me to open my mouth wide, o wide open. Do you watch my stream, brother? That, like, that guy's me. We are the one in the same. So we need to have a symbiotic relationship with a fucking sub badge next to his name. You know what I mean? But, listen, can you blame me for being obsessed with subs? Like, I'm trying to... I'm trying to be great today, brother. Now you got a sub. Exactly. Yo, McGowan, good job there. That's what I'm saying. We're delicious, man. The only, th the only thing to do it is do it. Just rip it. it. feels so good. All right, boys. Yo, here's the deal. We got to have a moment of honesty now. I need you guys to stick with me. <sighs> My back kind of hurts after that golf lesson. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know what I did, but... All right, gentlemen, I took a golf lesson this morning. All right, so here's the deal. There's a local golf facility where I live and I signed up for lessons there maybe like a year and a half ago because I had a lot of golf coming up I had a lot of big moment once in a lifetime opportunity golf experiences on the way I'm like dude I really need to try to get better now to give you guys the full gambit here or full gamut whatever I need to give you guys context so I never had golf lessons growing up. I never learned how to play properly. I just learned from my dad, and that was about it. And the internet is not what it is today. It was not the same back when I was a kid. Really, the only place that you could go for instruction is if you could find like a practice facility to get lessons, which m my parents couldn't afford, or you would read books. I did neither of those things. I kind of just went with the wind followed the flow just kind of picked it up and kind of ran with it i didn't really like golf as a kid then i got older started playing it again it's great i love it now clearly but my journey to being a good golfer has not been easy i am uh two things working against me with my golf swing it's i'm not athletic so a lot of these movements that are probably pretty natural for most people are not natural for me and the golf swing is a very unnatural thing regardless but for the most part, a lot of the core mechanics involve really knowing how to move your body, having rhythm, finding tempo. And I feel like people that are inherently athletic have an easier time picking it up or at least getting better quicker. On top of that, like I said, I never took lessons. So, you know, I'm navigating in the dark and I built a lot of bad habits. Okay. A lot of bad habits. So year and a half ago, like I said, I've got Band and Dunes coming up. I've got my bachelor party coming up, which is basically a golf trip. We had a pro-am to play in from uh, AT&T down in Texas. So a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of places where I'll probably never have these opportunities again. And if I did, it won't be for a very long time. So I just really wanted to be as confident as I could going into those big golf moments and those big golf trips. So we started taking golf lessons and the guy that I met at this facility that I started taking lessons at, his name is Nick. This guy's a fucking man. Great guy. He actually gave my wife lessons that I bought for her because we started playing golf together. She started getting more interested in it. And my wife's actually like very athletic. She played all these sports growing up and, you know, pound for pound. Like if you just looked at us as two individuals, she's definitely more athletic than me. 
So she takes nine lessons with this guy over the course of a couple months and doesn't go and practice. Like she doesn't go to the range after they're 45 minutes. They're very quick hits, but she never practiced at all. She kind of just went in there nine times and left. And that was it. She didn't play golf for another couple months. And then one day we decided to go to the course together and I really see her swing. And I'm like, wait, honey, how is this even fucking possible? Why, why, why are you, why do you look so good with a golf club in your hand? And, you know, she still struggles with certain things like hitting down on the ball and learning how to compress her irons. But, you know, I've been playing my whole life. I still don't know how to do that. And so I was just, like, blown away by her ability to, like, at least from, a, like, the checkpoints of the swing, like her backswing, her transition. She had a lot of fucking, uh, you know, the club just whipping through. She's finding the slot. She's getting it around. I mean, it just looked great. So I'm like, hey, 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 what's going on here with this guy, Nick? So I reach out to him. Uh, Haley puts me in a group text because I was at this practice facility already working with somebody else. So I'm like, well, okay. Turns out Nick, his younger brother, is a huge fan of mine. And Haley and Nick had talked about that before. So then she introduces me to Nick, and I decide to start taking lessons with him. And for me, at least, you know, I've never liked going to the gym with, like, personal trainers. I've never really worked with somebody one-on-one because... If I'm going to the gym, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to put my headphones in. I want to work out. I don't want to, I talk all day. I don't want to do that. And for the golf lessons, like, you know, kind of felt the same way. I need this guy. I need whoever's helping me more than anything. But I got to feel comfortable because I can be a little socially awkward. That would be, I'm sure that might sound surprising to you guys, but I'm still, you know, pretty socially awkward. But since this guy knew who I was, it just made things easier for me to feel comfortable And so we started having a great time. Like, I loved working with Nick. And I was going in there two, three times a week. But the problem was we became such close friends over the course of taking lessons that it was almost like we needed an arm's length away from each other because now I was really kind of dictating what the curriculum would be when I walked in there. And we just got too far down these rabbit holes where, you know, we'd be working on something one lesson, I'd go home, go to the range, and this new thing would pop up. And I'm like, well, I saw this TikTok, which I know is dangerous if there's any golf instructors in here. The problem now is there's too much information. I had the problem that there was no information when I was a kid, no resources if you couldn't afford lessons. And I never read these damn books. But now, since we were such good friends, and I would just go off and work on my own shit, then come back, and there would be a new problem, we'd jump on that issue, and then... Long story short, I was never actually getting better. We were just putting band-aids on these problems, okay? The reason why I was explaining this entire situation is Nick left the practice facility. He's not working there anymore. And I I hurt my back, so I've been out of commission for the last three months. And then the three months prior to that, I was getting ready for the baby on the way. So I wasn't taking any golf lessons. So it's long story short, it's been like six months since I've had a real golf lesson. So Nick leaves, had a great time. This guy helped me so much in my golf career. I, I went from hitting my, my seven iron, like 150 yards, like 170, really compressing the ball, finding this distance that I never had. We stopped working together. These six months go by. I've played three rounds of golf since my back has recovered, since Gracie was born, and this distance is just gone. Like, I mean, I was swinging real easy at the course because I didn't want to hurt my back. I didn't want to risk hurting my back. But, like, I was lost again. I I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm getting the ball straight, but it's not going anywhere. I would be blocking shots out. They would be, you know, high, right, short, whatever. So the guys at this practice facility, because I bought all these lessons, Haley got me more lessons for Christmas with Nick. And then with this package that I had, it was nine lessons. He's like, yo, I can save you a bunch of money if you want to buy nine more right now, just even it out at 18. I'm like, perfect. So I buy the 18 lessons and now Nick is gone. So I'm like, fuck, I just bought all these things. I I don't have anybody to work with. They reach out to me like two weeks ago. They're like, yo, you want to get back in here? You got all these lessons. We, we'd love to help you out again. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. We get our first lesson on the books, and it was this morning at 6 a.m. 
So I go in there and I basically explain all the things that I just explained to you guys. I'm like, this guy, Nick, is such a good golf coach, but we just, I, I, I feel like we actually hurt ourselves by becoming such good friends. So they're like, okay, what's your biggest problem? I'm like, this distance that I had is not there anymore. I've got a launch monitor in my backyard, my ball speed. I was able to get my seven iron up to like 120. Now I'm at like 105 and the ball's going 20 yards shorter. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm just, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So they're like, okay, let's start with your grip because I took 10 swings in front of them. They got it all these high speed cameras. They can see it. Brother, we sat here for 30 minutes getting me to grip the club properly. And let me tell you, I know I'm yapping. Mind-blowing, gentlemen. It was fucking mind-blowing. You know, I always thought that I had my finger, my club in my fingers and I was doing everything right. I wasn't even fucking close, boys. I mean, this guy had to draw lines literally on my glove to help me cheat. Because after every swing I took, he'd have me re-grip it to make sure I'm doing it right. He's like, yo, listen, the reason why you're dragging the handle through, the reason why you lost all this speed is because you're not, you're not even, it's not even possible for you to, you know, skip that stone and feel like the release and really whip the hands through and just get this club head and feel the club head whipping through. I'm like, yeah, I, that, I mean, it makes so much sense because I feel like I know what I'm supposed to do. But every time I try to do it, it just feels impossible. So, again, we get the club in my, finger, my fingers. I feel like I've never held a golf club this way in my entire life. I'm like, this is the craziest shit. There's no way I'm going to be able to make contact with this ball. This is so bizarre. But it wasn't at all. I'm like, okay, this is, this is why people are doing these fucking waggles at their pre-swing routine. This is why they're feeling this club head just kind of rifle through i'm like there's no way it's this simple and it's i've been this wrong this entire time brother i shit you not they're like okay i want you to just release that fucking club head and i want you to feel like you're skipping that stone i can see you in your pre-shot rehearsal like i know you you look like you know what you're doing but you just weren't capable boys i shit you not I started hitting the tightest little fucking draw. I'm taking like a half swing. My ball speed was like 116 miles an hour without me even fucking trying, gentlemen. I wasn't even trying. Bro, I, I had to take a fucking screenshot of this, of this screen. Look at this shit. You guys won't be able to see it that well. Look at this. I, I was barely trying. I got 118 mile an hour ball speed. Ah, oh, you guys can't see it. But if anybody golfs and you like numbers, I carried my seven iron 165 yards, a total of 172, negative 4.2 attack angle, 118 miles an hour. Club head speed was 87 miles an hour. I mean, brother, fake screenshot? Well, Enad, guess what? I got a video too if you want to see it. So with all that being said, gentlemen, for the first time in my life, I'm actually feeling very optimistic about my golf game. For the first time in a very, very long time, I'm feeling very optimistic about my golf game. I'm fired up, gentlemen. Honestly, I told him, I'm like, I'm, gonna, I'm only going home to stream video games, but, well, I told him I was going to work. I didn't tell him what the work was. They know I play games, but, bro, I had half a mind to cancel the fucking stream today and just go out to the golf course. But gentlemen, just, just know I haven't earned that right yet. We, we got, I could not tolerate getting on tomorrow. Actually, I can't stream tomorrow because I got to go to the compound. But if I didn't stream today and tomorrow, these part-timer allegations would have been unbeatable. I, I wouldn't have been able to show my face on this stream. Well... Yo, McGowan, my back definitely feels a little uncomfortable. Like, it hurts more now than it did when I played golf at the course. But I think that's because my first couple swings of the day, I didn't... I should have warmed up more. But when I was swinging that, the way that I was, you know, properly, McGowan, my back didn't hurt with those swings. Did you stretch? I stretched a little bit. 
I wish I would have stretched more. I, I don't think I re-injured it. I think it's just tender from it being injured prior. Like, it doesn't feel as deep as it was. I'm, I'm hoping I didn't fuck anything up. But, you know, even if I did, the worst case scenario fucked up my back again. And I got to sit here and wait two more months. At least I know when I get back to playing golf again, it's not going to be as bleak and as grim as it's felt. So I'm excited. Uh, gentlemen, we did a lot of yapping there. Thank you for listening to that long-winded story. But, you know, I, I felt like the context was important. I'm fired up. Robo Proxy, thank you so much for the gifted sub, brother. Goldie, thank you very much for the uh, gifted tier one sub to Enad. That, you're a good man for that, Goldie. Kid Chobs, thanks for the tier one. Pyro Rhino, thank you very much for the seven months. Can't stop edging. Me neither, brother. So it feels so good to know that you're edging for me, brother. Jamesy, thanks for the tier one. Yuri, Z-Class. Bergnuts, thanks for the gifted sub. Lee Taylor, appreciate you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Can you share what you changed about your grip? Yeah, I mean, I can describe it as best as possible. Long story short, trying to get the pad of this club uh, uh, with my left hand. This is helping with leverage. You know, really, it's these three fingers, and, and you're trying to, like, hook, hook the club into your three fingers. And then this pad is kind of like the leverage, you know, because when you lift with your fingers, the butt end of the club is naturally just going to, like, push off the pad of your hand. And so when you hinge your wrists, that's what's creating this leverage. And then I bet I, I was feeling like I was, and then I, he had me keeping my thumb real short so that the pad of my, uh, this part of my uh, hand is like really engaged. So short thumb, I got the fingers hooked in. And then my right hand was all fucked up too. Like, Basically, I had the palms of my hand on the club the whole time, and I thought that I didn't. Long story short, we were fucking stupid. Golf is so complicated, it is, but it's, it's rewarding because of how complicated it actually is. Hands looking shaky there? You think so? My brother has a left, uh, he's got a tremor in his left hand. I don't think they look that shaky. You guys think this is shaky? You don't think I could be a surgeon? Well, this is probably because I got the caffeine in me and the nicotine. Yo, listen, shut the fuck up, chat. I got to stop reading my chat. You guys are going to make me think I got diabetes. I got early onset fucking lupus, MS, something. Jesus, you guys are going to hell. Yo, Duluk, thank you very much for the prime. The yapping is why I'm here. I love that out of you, Duluk. You understand me so well, brother. Jordan, thank you very much for the tier one. Vipers, thank you very much for the prime. Ass Milk with 100 bits. Great username, Ass Milk. We always love you around here. And Exquisy, thank you very much for the gifted sub. So, on the controller, you always look shaky. Yo, Zane, watch your fucking mouth, brother. I was shooting yesterday. We were shooting. Um, but, oh, what was I going to say? The yapping is why I'm here. I was about to yap about something else, but I lost it. Honestly, don't even play COD today. Let's just yap all day. Honestly, the yapping is pretty fucking exhausting. Time to change the controller grip? Jesus. You know how many times I've done that? You know how many times I've done that, brother? We can't do it. I'm honestly about to boot this fucking game up right now. Masters week. Let's just talk all about golf. What's in the bag? I got P770s in that, in that bag, brother. I got a Terillium Scotty Cameron putter. I've got a QI-10 uh, Max TaylorMade driver. That's pretty much it. DLS Array, thanks for the gifted sub, brother. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Yo, that honestly should be my username, brother. Let's talk about this. Appreciate you guys listening, though. I hope you all having a great night. Great morning. It's not even close to being night. Can't believe you aren't going to the Masters. Yeah, I want to go to the Masters one day, but flying six hours to Georgia and then the cost of it all. I got invited to the Masters a couple or two years ago, I think it was. And I, decide, I decided not to go just because my anxiety kind of took over. I had to take a plane to Texas and then they were going to take me on a jet to Augusta, which, you know, anybody in their right mind would say yes to. But at that time, like... My wife and I have just spent so much time together. Like, we're always together. 
And I feel like we've kind of become codependent on each other, which is like a very beautiful thing and intimate thing, but it's also kind of a problem. Like anytime I'm away from her now, like I don't like to travel without her because my pessimistic brain just thinks something bad's going to happen. So I decided not to go on that trip. Listen, I, I've been fucking battling anxiety my whole life. I wish I wasn't the way that I am, but, you know, kind of got to embrace it at a certain point. Anxiety is no joke, though. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, my wife and I don't like doing anything without each other, which a lot of times, you know, the boys chirp at each other, call me a simp. It's, listen, I don't think I'm a simp because I love my wife, but... Yeah, we're, we're very, like, codependent on each other now and just our presence with each other. So I'm like, dude, I'm not going to fly, you know, six hours across the country, four days by myself, you know, just to watch golf. Like, if I were going on a golf trip, sure. Like, let's go play golf. I'm actually doing something, and I'll be busy the entire time, so I won't have time to think about the fact that we're apart. But, yeah, I definitely want to go to the Masters one year. But if I'm going to go to the Masters, I want to bring my wife with me because she watches a lot of golf with me now. I got her held at gunpoint on the couch, and she says she's enjoying it, but that still doesn't mean I don't have that pistol gripped pointing straight at her. So can we really be sure she loves it? I don't know. Yeah, in-game, in-game for sure. Yo, uh, Tricotsman, thank you very much for the prime. Odie Saul, thanks for the tier one, brother. Good morning, my little co cum slut. Jesus Christ. Yo, Saul, you're definitely ours. 120 FOV, 2020 cents. We're smoking crystal today. Yes, sir, Saul. The Kid Prodigy, thanks for the sub, brother. Vibes are high today, big dog. Vibes are sky high. Being, listen, bro, if I'm hit a 7 iron, 165 yard carry without really even trying too hard, listen, I know I can get that motherfucker 170, no problem. Well, as soon as I start using this body right, I could, I, I, I could put this fucking video they gave me in the, uh, in the Discord. Only thing is, I don't want to put the, video in the discord because the swing still didn't look like my backswing looked awful i was you know taking it inside it's a whole thing but you know we're taking it day by day the grip thing we spent literally 45 minutes working on my grip today so nothing else really changed much except for the speed but i'm excited all right boys i'm gonna boot this game up we're gonna get started here soon are you hitting the penji uh, yo, listen, I gotta be honest with you boys. Yesterday, I didn't hit the pen for the first time on stream in quite some time, and I got off stream, and I was very productive. My wife and I, we went to it. Oh, man, I, yo, actually, boys, I got problems. If you're down to yap a little bit more, do I, do I got any parents in the chat? I actually forgot. I wanted to talk about this way more than I wanted to talk about golf. Long story short, oh, Jesus, you guys know now that I have just these buzz words and buzz phrases. Okay, <clears throat> chat, I was going to make an Instagram story about this because I wanted to get opinions from parents, but I'm going to try to keep this one short and sweet. When your baby's born in the hospital, you have all these nurses that help you, and then you go to a pediatrician, they'll come visit you in the hospital. Our pediatrician, just so coincidentally, her office was right across the street from the hospital. So we met her in the uh, recovery room, in the baby delivery hospital room, whatever. Gracie's now 17, uh, 17 weeks old. She's like four months. Our pediatrician says that she's showing signs of torticollis. Torticollis is like something to do with their neck. Her neck is, you know, has you know limitations because of the way that she was sitting in Haley's womb, right? And what comes with torticollis and the fact that it was a C-section is like her head doesn't go through and slide through the woman's, you know, vagina. So, like, when we take Gracie out, her head looks nice and round and everything. Great. Take her to the doctor to say that she might have torticollis. She might have some hip dysplasia. You know, hip dysplasia, a lot of babies deal with it. It's like their hip socket. It's not completely flush. It's a whole thing. So the pediatrician recommends we go see uh, 
a physical therapist and a, a sports related doctor about the hip dysplasia. We go to the doctor about it and I wasn't at that appointment, but he basically tells my wife that it's mild hip dysplasia and how you treat it. If it's severe is you put braces on her legs and her hips for a couple months as she's, you know, a kid as a baby. So we go back to the pediatrician. We tell her this information like, hey, he said it's a mild hip dysplasia. She's like, oh, well, if that doctor told you it was mild, I've had patients that went to him before. If it's mild and he doesn't think she needs the braces, I don't think you need to do it. But what you can do is just follow, you know, make another appointment two weeks from now and go see him again and get a better answer. Like, let's just make sure. So we set this appointment up which was yesterday, we get to the doctor's office and right off the rip, I was like, okay, not a huge fan of this doctor right now because he almost seemed like he was annoyed that we were already back. And we weren't supposed to be back there for like another four weeks. It was supposed to be six weeks until she had her second ultrasound from this doctor. But our pediatrician recommended like, hey, just go back now and let's see what he says. And I wasn't at the first appointment, so I tell the doctor straight up, I'm like, hey, my wife said this, the pediatrician said this, I just want to hear it from you and get a, a, you know, another explanation. So in, a, immediately, I just didn't like how he reacted, just me being perceptive to you know, very uh, intricate, you know, just his mood, the way that he's delivering his information. Like, it, it almost seemed like the eyes were rolling in the back of his head, like, how the fuck are you guys here back here again already? So... He puts her on the he puts her on the desk on the on the table, pulls out his ultrasound and he's like, "Listen, once again, this is mild borderline hip dysplasia. You know, she could be what if she grows up and decides to be an artist and she doesn't need to ever have to put her hips and her legs at their limits. Like if she were an artist, she'll never experience any pain, she'll never deal with any problems with her hip." That's the way that I see it right now. Now, if she were like a triathlon, triathlete, Ironman, you know, she could need a hip replacement when she's 30. Like, that's in the realm of possibilities. But for me, and all the things that I've seen in my expertise as a doctor, as being a parent as well, who just went through all this, I think it's mild borderline hip dysplasia, and I don't think you need the braces. We're like, okay. But then this guy throws another fucking curveball at us because my wife now tells him, like, they, you know, they say that she needs a helmet. She's got torticollis. And he's like, oh, she doesn't have torticollis. Look, move, look how I'm moving her neck. If she if I can turn her left, I can turn her right. Her ear can touch her, her shoulders. She doesn't have torticollis. These helmets that people are wearing, it's an L.A. thing. Like, I, I don't think she has torticollis. So I'm like, wait, what the fuck is going on now? Hold on. So then we talked to her pediatrician again, and it's like, the place that told her that she needed a helmet, that she has severe torticollis, this is an independent business, and their metric system for, like, defining it as mild, severe, they, they set those standards themselves. So when you hear them say severe, don't get worried. Don't be crazy about it because it's, they're running a business. This, this doctor seems pretty base low-key. I agree with that ass milk. But now I'm over here like... Pissed off. Because I'm thinking... I've been sitting here saying, if this doctor... So now I'm like, okay, well... Who the fuck do am I supposed to believe? You know what I mean? I'm going to the right people. I'm going to the specialists. I'm going to the doctors... The pediatrician, pediatrician saying one thing, this doctor saying another, this, uh, these doctors and physical therapists are saying something completely different. I'm just fucking pissed off knowing that life really is about who you know. And I just wish I had like a close family doctor that I have a relationship with because I don't know which way's up and I don't know which way's down. They, you know, for me, I always grew up like I trust doctors, but now they're all saying something completely different than the other doctor. And I don't know how to make uh, sense of it all. So, you know, 
to me, it's not a cash. I mean, it's a cash grab for their business, but I have insurance. I have good insurance. So we're not really probably going to pay anything out of pocket. But the hip dysplasia is mild. The torticollis, some people say we have it, some people we don't. Am I hurting her by putting the helmet on? Does she actually need the helmet? Do I need the braces? I mean, he's like, it can't hurt, but it's going to be a big fucking hassle. I'm like, well, if it's going to be a hassle, but it's not going to hurt her and it's only going to help, then should we just do it? I don't know, brother. These motherfuckers piss me off, dude. I just don't know what to do, man, because... I want to listen to doctors, but they're all saying something different. So who knows, man? Trust your fatherly instincts. I mean, my instincts are say she don't need the braces. She don't need the helmet. She's going to grow into it. But then you got people, you know, my wife put out an Instagram story and her Instagram's private. So it's just friends, close friends. And a lot of people, even parents replied to her Instagram story when we talked about the helmet and they were like, man, I'm so happy that they have ways to fix and correct these things now because when I was a kid, we didn't have those things. And I grew up and I wasn't even able to fit a, a bike helmet on my head because of this. So I'm like, should we just do the fucking helmet? Ah, bro. You... Everybody's out to get a chunk of your ass, brother. Everybody's looking at a way to make some money. But now I'm like... You're saying fatherly instincts. I don't have a medical background, brother. I don't have any fatherly instincts when it comes to this. Like, in my mind, I'm like, kids have been born for hundreds and centuries, fucking thousands of years. We didn't have any of this. And we all ended up here just fine. So do we really need it? Like, my natural disposition on it is... We don't need to do anything. Just let her grow up and be a kid. But at the same time, like, I don't want to, 30 years from now, she ends up being an athlete and she's in severe pain and needs a hip replacement. I'm going to feel fucking terrible that we didn't take all the precautions and measures that we could have. So that's pretty much it. And I want to know if any other parents went through that. Father, the father, put the helmet on. Yeah. If anything, bro, I think we would do the helmet and not the hip braces. Dead ass gonna have her looking like Forrest Gump if I do both, right? The helmet is more normal than you think. Dude, I agree with you. I've seen kids with helmets. Like, I've seen it. But when this doctor who didn't grow up in California, who seems to be a pretty good doctor, is like, yeah, this is an L.A. thing. Don't do the helmet. I'm like, okay. These motherfuckers. Jesus Christ. I appreciate you guys listening, man. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yo, G Fish, thanks for the tier one, brother. Get another opinion. That's what I said. I told my wife. When I walked out of there, I was kind of annoyed. I'm like, yo, I... I just met this doctor for the first time and he's acting, you know, more or less annoyed that we came back so soon. But then she tells me, well, the first time that I saw him, he was very patient, very thoughtful, listened to everything I said, and he was very uh, helpful. I'm like, all right, well, maybe we caught this guy at a bad time. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. He's probably had a long day. I don't know. But I'm like, it's my fucking baby. Like. I don't care what this guy's going through. Can you at least just talk to me nice and. Yeah, he just seemed a little dismissive. Which maybe I'm just like overly perceptive on that and I'm just looking for trouble, but he seemed a little dismissive, which I didn't like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Regardless, like it's his job. Should we report him? No, 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 no. He, he's a good doctor. He didn't, he didn't. He didn't do anything wrong. I just wish the bed, the, the the bedside manner was a little bit more like, hey, you know, can you be a little bit more patient with me? He obviously, yeah, of course, string. He didn't realize I'm top two fifty in Call of Duty. He didn't realize this is my daughter. 
That's exactly it. So, yo, Implanted Man, thank you very much for the 200 bits. He said, about to be a first-time girl dad. Any tips? Uh, yo, I was thinking about this, brother, the other day. So, when we first got pregnant, I was hoping it was going to be a boy, just because I know how to talk to guys. I'm like, all right, I'm going to have this guy playing golf when he's can stand. He's going to have a club in his hand. I'm like, I can do this well. But girls, I just, my whole life, I don't know how to talk to women until I met my wife. It's great. Uh, I think we actually got very lucky being girl dads, okay? Because statistically and historically speaking, there aren't a lot of women and little girls that grow up to be serial killers. The majority of serial killers, hence the mustache, end up being guys. So I'm like, okay, all of our fucking friends that are having boys and have, you know, somebody to take the throne over when I croak. They got to be looking over their shoulder till the end of time. I told them you got to, hey, if the cat goes missing, hey, honey, what's up? No, it's okay. I was talking about the helmet and the hip dysplasia. Well, good. This is about Gracie, too. This is about Gracie? Oh, no. Is something wrong? No, uh, not really. Passport. Earliest I could find one in a month is April of 1945. So both parents have to be there. Both parents have to be there? Yes. Oh, fuck. And What's the second earliest appointment? Because I got to take tomorrow May, off stream. May 2nd. May 2nd? Yeah. And that just makes me nervous because that's like, like, like two months. Before. How far is the passport place? And you can stream all night long. All right, we'll go. We'll go. You already scheduled it? <laughs> Perfect. I didn't want to lose it. it was literally just one. And I looked in a 40 mile radius. No, we'll do it. We'll do it. 10 45 Thursday? 10 45 Thursday. Chad, my wife's being a total bitch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, no worries, honey. Okay. Um,. But yeah, chat, girls don't grow up to be serial killers, and guys do. So we got a girl dad, it's a good thing. You know, I got my buddies, if it, one of the... If the cat goes missing, I'm telling you, you got to look out back in the shed. Your kid might be murdering cats. You never know. Part-timer, chat, don't even start. Don't even start. No, there's just... Uh, we need we need Gracie to have a passport because there's a chance that I need to travel internationally this year. And I just don't know if we'd be willing to be away from Gracie for five, six, seven days. If anything, we might just bring her with us. So all right, ten forty five chat. I'll probably stream early in the morning. I'll probably go from like 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then come back and stream again after. We'll see. Um, but I don't want to hear no part-timers. But yeah, listen, brother, I uh, I certainly was preferencing... I My preference would have been a boy. Having a little girl is pretty incredible, man. It's just everything is cuter. Everything is cuter. Like when she starts peeing and you're changing her diaper and she got a little smile on her face, it's like, oh, honey... Okay, let me change this up for you. Like you kiss on the forehead. When it's a guy, if it's a little boy, I'd be like, oh, you fucking dirty piece of shit. We should point that thing somewhere else, you dumbass. You know? So a little girl, I think, is better for the for a guy like me. I'm like, she could do no wrong in my eyes. A little boy, I'm like, yo, can you fucking act your age? Grow up a little bit here? This guy's taking a shit. It smells awful. I'm like, oh, you dirty bastard. With a girl, I'm like, oh, honey. You made a poo-poo? Okay. Let's change it. So, I'm kind of all in on being a girl dad. Stop yapping and let's play some ranked. All right. I'm, I'm basically down. I'm down. Do you own LAT? I do, brother. I do. And I'm over here yapping away. Time to play. Yo, Noodles, thanks for the tier one, brother. Corzy with the 66 months. This guy's unbelievable. 
voicemail. How the fuck are you doing? Nature out of here. Unfortunately, Corsi's not available at the moment. He'll be back to you as soon as possible. We'll see you fudging later. Love that. But yeah, Implanted Man, going back to the initial uh, girl dad tips. Brother, just be patient. I, I have to teach myself patience. I'm not a patient person. Uh, you got to be there for your wife. You know, if your wife is anything like mine or your significant other you're having a baby with, I feel very lucky because Haley, uh, it, she just naturally has very motherly instincts. And, you know, if you guys breastfeed or you guys do formula, the first couple weeks, you can't really do much other than, like, wait on your wife. Like, hey, okay. When they start breastfeeding, uh, right away, they're just, like, insatiably thirsty, you know? Let me go fill up your water. Let me get you the pillow to put under your arm so that your breastfeeding is more comfortable. Oh, you need a diaper change? All right, let me do that. But, like, in a lot of ways, women do a lot of work, at least in my situation. Um, even now that she's older, like, sometimes we'll supplement formula. Not often. She's still breastfeeding. And Haley's done an amazing job with that. I told Haley I'm going to be a great father. I think I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job, but... I'm going to be really locked in when she's walking around and when she's, uh, you know, my phys uh, my chiropractor I went to for my back, he's like, yeah, you know, if you got the right woman, fathers really don't do much until they're like 18 months old. I'm like, all right, bet. I hope that's me too. Let's go. All right, gentlemen, I am going to boot up Call of Duty. I am going to take a piss and then we're going to start this day. I'm going to start this day off. Tuesday, Tuesday. New master. Thanks for the tier one, brother. Dot 149. Thanks for the tier one. Creamer, Smitty, Noodles. Thank you, gentlemen. Kerhart, G-Fish, Rug.